This is News 10 ABC, your local election headquarters. The county's in phenomenal shape. Financially, it's the strongest it's ever been. Incumbent Steve McLaughlin will remain Rensselaer County Executive. What he plans to focus on and the reaction from his challenger. A measure increasing the Community Police Review Board's authority here in Albany passing last night. However, some calling that measure a, quote, power grab. And the CDC approving the Pfizer vaccine for children between the ages of 5 and 11. The step New York has to take before this group can start getting shots into arms. All right. It's all ahead for you this morning. Thanks for waking mm. up with 10 here on Fox 23, day after the election. That's right. Also a National Sandwich Day. Oh, oh. that's a fun one. But we're going to have much more on that. Uh, about an hour from now, so you're going right. to want to stay tuned. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's almost lunchtime for us. So. <laughs> it, it is lunchtime for us right now. Yeah. <laughs> We're chilly here out there this morning. Oh my goodness, it's the coolest yeah. morning that we've seen you so far this mm -hmm. season. Uh, maybe give yourself a few. You can even customize your traffic alerts on there. News 10 ABC is your local election headquarters. We've got all your results this morning and all the key races around the capital region. We're going to start in Rensselaer County, in the race for county executive. Incumbent Steve McLaughlin winning handily with 63% of the vote. All precincts reporting here is Democratic challenger Gwen Wright walking away with 34% of the vote in that race. The Republican held a comfortable lead throughout the night. McLaughlin was first elected in 2018. He called the victory a great team effort and celebrated the success of other GOP candidates across the county. McLaughlin says Rensselaer County is in great shape financially, especially coming out of the pandemic, and has touted his government's ability to continue to cut taxes. Putting money back into people's pockets and paving the roads and doing all the, thing, all the things we're doing. The county's in phenomenal shape. Financially, it's the strongest it's ever been. Uh, we, we need that to continue. And the way that I, as a county executive, can try to make that happen is that the economy stays on track, our sales tax revenue stays up and strong. Uh, and that's why it's so important to expand those opportunities to shop in Rensselaer County. And News 10 also catching up with Democratic challenger Gwen Wright, who had this to say about the race. Well, you know, it's always exciting when you come to the end of the race. Everyone wants to know what the results are. But for me, I'm more interested in how people felt about the race. And if I did a good job in helping people see that there could be a different kind of a candidate. And here's a look at the results for Colony Town Supervisor, Republican Peter Crummy, getting the win there, 57% of the vote over his Democratic challenger, Kelly Matija. And Crummy says he believes what secured his win was a commitment to focus on what voters care about the most. We stuck to the issues, we remained positive, mm -hmm. and we brought our message home to what the town residents were asking me about. And former supervisor, longtime supervisor Paula Mahan, who you see right there, stopping by to offer Crummy her congratulations. It was Mahan's retirement after serving the town of Colony for more than 13 years. To Crummy says it inspired him to fill that leadership void. In Albany, incumbent Democratic Mayor Kathy Sheehan has won re-election. And Proposition 7 also passing here in the capital city, which will increase the Community Police Review Board's authority. Our Jen Seelig is live this morning with more on that from Police Department Headquarters. Jen, good morning. Good morning. Many Albany City officials say that the goal is to create more transparency between the police department and the rest of the community. And last night, many city voters agree. Proposition 7 passed. This will give more power and responsibility to Albany's Community Police Review Board. This will allow the board to conduct independent investigations of police misconduct. The board consists of nine members who must be Albany residents, but there's currently two vacant spots. Council members say this proposition will create equity, safety and trust all, all across the board. However, union members say board members aren't trained to understand certain police officer decisions made in high pressure scenarios. We'll drive a wedge between us and the community and be a step backward in our effort to continue to grow collaboratively together with the community. Albany's PBA president Mike Delano says, quote, oversight is fine. We are heavily scrutinized. We get that. We're OK with that. It's proposal seven, not a normal oversight. It's a total takeover of our disciplinary procedure to drive that wedge, I think, is going to end up causing police officers not to want to stay here. The board is expected to meet for their monthly meeting next Tuesday. That's the latest here in Albany. Jen Selig, News 10 ABC. Thank you, Jen. All right, to Fulton County now, and a look at results for Mayor of Gloversville here. 
Uh, the incumbent, Vince DeSantis, appointed mayor in 2019 after Dayton King resigned. Following a guilty plea to official misconduct charges, DeSantis eventually winning a special election later that year. Now, just a few uh, precincts reporting here, but DeSantis with a slight lead over his Republican challenger, William Roback Jr. We'll be keeping an eye on that one. Let's show you the results for the Johnstown mayoral race with 100% of the precincts in. Republican Amy Pratt getting 84% of the vote over her challenger, Michael Rose. End of the race for Columbia County Sheriff, incumbent Republican Dave Bartlett, squaring off against one of his own deputies, Don Kraft. Now, according to unofficial results from the Columbia County Board of Elections, Kraft ahead right now by more than 1,800 votes. Bartlett has been sheriff since 2013 with the department since 1984. Kraft running as an independent here, lifelong resident of Greenport, and has been with the department since 1998. All right, a look at some regional races now. And we start with the race for mayor in Buffalo, which has received yeah. a lot of national attention. Byron Brown saw a huge upset in the June primaries by India Walton, self-described Democratic Socialist. Brown tried to get his name on the ballot. Ultimately, the courts decided against that. And then he launched a campaign as a write-in candidate in hopes of winning a fifth term. And as you see right here, Byron Brown in the lead, 59% of the vote with 68% of the precincts reporting. Maybe working for him. And here's a look at the race for New York City mayor. Residents looking to replace Bill de Blasio. And the AP calling this one for former police captain, former state senator Eric Adams. He campaigned heavily on public safety. His closest challenger was Republican Curtis Siwa, longtime conservative radio show host and founder of the anti-crime group, the Guardian Angels. In Syracuse, three candidates going head-to-head -head in the mayoral race in the city. 100% of the precincts reporting the incumbent. Independent Ben Walsh getting 61% of the vote declared the winner there. All right, according to a new report, the 2020 census grossly undercounted New York's population, costing the state a congressional seat in the redistricting process. The Urban Institute reporting that the census undercounted New York's population by 1.1%, or roughly 225,000 people. If you remember, the state fell short of just 89 people maintaining its full congressional representation, leading to the redistricting that is currently underway. Now, the report attributes this undercount to pandemic restrictions, natural disasters, and Trump administration interference with the census count. Remember, for the latest on your election coverage and a lot more, get online, news10.com. In your race to vaccinate this morning, CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky has approved the recommendation to start vaccinating kids ages 5 to 11 with the Pfizer vaccine. This expands the vaccine recommendations to roughly 28 million children nationwide. Now, Governor Kathy Hochul responding to the announcement last night saying, quote, New York State's Clinical Advisory Task Force unanimously agreed with the CDC. Next, the New York State Department of Health will issue guidance to the public. The governor also encouraging parents to reach out to their pediatricians and says the state is preparing right now to administer those shots to kids. And now pediatricians are weighing in on the CDC's announcement. They say although some parents may still be concerned about the safety of the vaccine, the benefits far outweigh the risks. They also say the vaccine will help bring normalcy back to the lives of many children who have had a tough time during the pandemic. Younger kids are having a harder time than ever which is, you know, we have data from the pediatric EDs about how the number of patients coming in with behavior, concerns, anxiety and stuff in that age group has doubled, tripled even. And that's because the society was shut down on them. So the COVID vaccine also provides this relief about going back to, to normalcy to a large extent. Currently, only Pfizer has authorization to administer the vaccine to children. However, both Johnson & Johnson and Moderna are working on their own versions, which still need FDA approval. Happening today, the U.S. Supreme Court will begin hearing oral arguments in a case filed by the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association on behalf of two Capital Region gun owners. And they argue a state law which restricts carrying a concealed weapon violates the Second Amendment. The law, which took effect in 1913, says a person applying for a license to carry a concealed handgun in public must have an actual need to carry the weapon. Robert Nash and Brandon Koch have restricted licenses at the moment, allowing them to carry firearms only when they have a specific reason to, and that includes hunting or target shooting. Both men would like to see that restriction removed so that they can carry concealed weapons for self-defense purposes. New details now in a story that we first brought you yesterday morning. 
The East Greenbush Police Department has arrested a 14 year old after the teen said that they'd found a needle in a piece of candy. Well, that teen has now been charged with falsely reporting an incident. Police say the teen admitted that the needle was not originally in the candy. The teen allegedly said they saw it on the social media app TikTok and thought it would be funny. TikTok. Can we oh. stop? Oh boy. 710 right now. Uh, News 10 continues to be your local election headquarters. We'll continue to bring you the results of all the races you need to know about here in the capital region, including the Albany mayoral race. Reaction from the winner, Mayor Kathy Sheehan, and her challengers coming up next. You're watching News 10 ABC, your local news leader, with Christina Arangio, Ryan Peterson, Mary Wilson, and meteorologist Jill Swed.